guys welcome back to the channel so in this video what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to plug into the computer with this and right there to the left of the PV Invective mini head is that's a Boss HM2 clone I actually just tracked the left and right channel with it uh, what I got so far sounds halfway decent so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna quad track this one I'm gonna track two more tracks without the PV uh, excuse me without the uh, pedal plugged in and it's just gonna be just the settings that I have um, on the invective itself. Typically for my low, my mid, and my high, 666 seems to be the sweet spot, go figure. And I got the Jackson Rhodes 92 uh, USA model. It's tuned in uh, standard B. Standard B seems to take the HM2 sound pretty well, so we're gonna roll with that. Nothing really spectacular as far as the riffing's going on. I've noticed with this pedal, and you know, you listen to a lot of records from like the 90s or even you know, uh, currently guys that are using the HM2, when you start, you know, doing a lot of elaborate stuff on the fretboard, it just, a lot of it gets lost. I mean, this pedal is great. This sound is really, really kick-ass for just like open chords or just slow chuggy parts. So that's kind of primarily what I did on this. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let me whip this camera around and then um, I'm going to do a live recording right now. So, hang on one second, let me whip this thing around. All right, so this video won't be complete without tracking bass. I probably won't show that in a video, but I want to track it anyway, just to give it that full fucking sound. So I just, I got my ESP LTD F415 bass in my lap. I'm gonna track that real quick, cause I gotta, I gotta do it a different way anyway. I gotta use a different uh, interface and blah, 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 blah. My plug-in, whatever, all that kind of jazz. So I will be right back, fellas, and then I'll show you guys the final product. We're just gonna get this bass playthrough done anyway. Screw it. I don't know if I'm in the shot or not, but whatever. We're not using the other camera because it looks like somebody peed in my room. It looks like shit. Anyway, here we go. We're ready. We won't do the volume swell thing. We'll just leave it as is. Ugh. I cannot do that three finger shit, man. I just can't. I've seen other death metal bass players that are just two finger guys too, like the Our Penance guy. Same thing, so I'm not gonna put myself down for not being able to do the three finger technique yet. It is a bitch. I just kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing here. I don't know if you can see me, I'm still using the other camera, but yeah, I just I gotta save my shit real quick. Hang on one second. Show me two edited. Just to recap. So I did two, I, I wanted to quad track this one, so I got two layers with the HM2 clone and then two of them without it, just my amp settings that I have from the PV itself. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna kind of blend the two sounds together, see what happens. But that's it. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys the final product. But one more thing I wanna add before I show you guys the final product. I use something very old school. <laughs> and you guys that know me when I record, I'm fucking, I am so behind, you know, like behind with technology because this shit just frustrates me and drives me nuts. So I only use what I started with and what I understand, and that's Audacity. I still use Audacity to record. Usually, what I do is uh, uh, when it comes to the plugin stuff, I'll record my tracks on Audacity, I'll take that dry signal, and I'll bring it in the Reaper. Reaper is another fucking beast. Like, I can't do anything in Reaper besides bring my. My dry signals in there, run them through the VST, which is my plugins, get the sound I'm looking for, save that file, bring it back to Audacity, and then try to level everything the best I can with my drums and my bass guitar and everything like that, and then send it away. Hopefully, it sounds good. I mean, a lot of times it's hitting this with my recording. Sometimes they, they come out good, other times not so good. So, uh, yeah, again, I'm always cursed when it comes to audio. This shit gives me the biggest headache. There isn't enough aspirin on this planet to cope with the headaches that I get. When I look at that shit, it drives me fucking crazy. So I just try to keep things as simple as possible. And yeah, I'm not even close. I'm not even in the same freaking league, ballpark, whatever you want to call it when it comes to these other people on YouTube when they make the recordings and shit. They are way beyond me. And they, go, they always will be because this shit is just fucking frustrating and I'm getting pissed off just talking about it so we're just going to show you the final product.
have it, guys. That's the final product. Um, to be honest with you, it came out a lot better than I would ever imagine. Like, um, like I said in the video, that's the first time I ever plugged in the PV Invective into my computer interface and everything, and then got the demo at the same time alongside with it. Um, that that HM2 clone that was given to me. That thing was kind of causing me some problems, some excess noise, this and that. I still got to kind of play around with that and figure it out. But um, no, I mean, I was I was pretty happy just based on the uh, level of knowledge or lack of knowledge, whatever you want to call it, as far as like my skill level of um, you know mixing and stuff like that, or just playing around with audio levels because I'm just I'm not good at that stuff. I don't have studio monitors and all that kind of shit. So I just kind of go off what I think sounds okay, and I just keep. Um, just playing around with the levels, things like that, until I think there's a good balance. Fortunately, too, when I did the, the drum tracks, when I built the drums, um, I usually use, um, if you guys are familiar with a program called Tabit, um, I still use that to this day, because I, like I said in the video, I just try to use stuff that I can understand and stuff that I learned from, you know, in the beginning doing all this stuff. So I still kind of just, I'm kind of set my ways at this point. I've always kind of been that way when I understand something and, um, you know, I, I know how to use it. I pretty much just stick to that until it becomes uh, eventually, you know, where I can't use it anymore kind of thing. But I'm able to still build the drums using that Tabit program where you just punch everything. It's basically what it is. It's like, if you guys are familiar with what Power Tab and what was the other one back in the day? A guitar, no, it, it's more like Power Tab. It's not like Guitar Pro, I don't believe it is. But So basically you got your six lines, like your, ta you know, your tablature lines. You can switch the instrument to um, a drum file or whatever. So that's how I build the drums. I know which hits are the snares, the cymbals, the kick drums, all that kind of stuff. And I take that MIDI file and I drop it and I use Easy Drummer too. And um, they had a really good set that uh, when I purchased it, that's when I purchased from Sweetwater a couple few years ago when I was uh, starting to do more recordings, this and that. I ended up uh, purchasing that and I got a free, um, a free pack so I think I got the death metal one and I was just kind of playing around with some new stuff when I was doing all this and um, I got some pretty kick-ass 90s like like the kicks the snare and I just kind of brought the levels up to where I thought they sounded halfway decent where you could still hear everything that's going on with the guitars and things of that nature so uh, yeah I got a really good um, I'm, I saved that uh, that little preset I might have to still kind of tweak it as I'm going you know, just as I'm learning all this shit as I do my recordings, but no, that came out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, if there's anything else, yeah, I could probably, you know, before I go, just some tidbits. Um, I don't think I mentioned the pickups that are in this guitar. Um, so yeah, this is the Randy Rhodes uh, USA R1 that I got a couple of years ago. Um, I got this off of eBay and I was kind of keeping my eye on it. Like what it was is, um, I've told this story before to you guys. My dad bought me a, um, it was back in 97. It was um, a Randy Rhodes one. That Guitar Center had for 500 bucks, brand freaking new, not a scratch on it. Because apparently they said they were discontinuing that model back then. You guys obviously know that that never turned out to be the case. But um, I remember, yeah, my dad had not seen the play in a long time. and. Saw me play that day for a couple hours of playing the Cannibal Corpse and all that stuff, and he never seen me play at that level yet. And um, yeah, so he ended up uh, ended up pretty much impressing him so much with all that shit that he ended up uh, secretly buying me that guitar as an early Christmas or birthday gift, however that went. But I remember years ago, it was like back in 2006. Things were tough with uh, you know work and just keeping my bills paid. So unfortunately, I had to part ways with that guitar, and that to this day broke my freaking heart. So um, what I wanted to do, just, I mean, I didn't get, because that one was just an old gloss black model. You know, obviously this one's got a custom graphic, which I think is pretty cool. They haven't, I haven't seen any other ones quite like this with that um, pile of skulls pattern. So this one really, really stuck out to me and the price was pretty damn good. I ended up uh, getting this with the case out the door. This is a 92. I got this for just a little over 1400 bucks, and you guys know how much these, these get stupid expensive, especially these ones that are, you know, the pre-Fender era, they're just going for uh, quite the premium now, but um, yeah, I always, deep down, I wanted to replace that guitar because, like I said, it killed me to have to sell that guitar because that was the one that was like, it basically won my dad's heart over and 
you know, it just inspired me all these years after that, just uh, getting into harder, more technical stuff and just advancing as a, as a guitar player, you know. So um, this made me really happy to pick this one up. And back to uh, what I was originally going to say about this. So I got, um, this came with just, um, these are Duncan Full Shreds. I've heard some mixed reviews online about it, but I've, I've learned a lot along the way that you can never go off anybody's opinion because what everybody hears and what they think sounds good and what they think sounds like trash, that's all subjective. It's how does it sound to you? When I plugged this in, the day that I got this and plugged it in, it had some old strings on it, but um, once I changed those out and then I put this into my tuning of uh, standard B, I went from, this was in uh, just regular E standard tuning, and I put new strings on it. My preferred choice, D'Addario strings. I don't believe there's any other string company out there. They're the only ones that exist because I've tried them all. I hate every other string but those. So I dropped those on this guitar and this thing just sounds, it's crazy. Like this is one of those guitars when you play it acoustically, it sounds heavy as shit. So only imagine what this thing sounds like when you plug it into a freaking amp, dude. This thing just wants to rip your fucking face off, and I love it, man. Yeah, as far as um, what this guitar has, like I said, it's got those full shreds, and this thing definitely sounds very aggressive with these pickups. So when something sounds right, I don't change a thing. Yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I know I, I talked uh, you guys' gear off, so I'm just going to cut the bullshit, and I'm going to get on with my life. And, uh, yeah, I know you guys will too soon when... Uh, I shut this off, so uh, I appreciate you guys coming to the channel. Uh, look for much more stuff coming. I'm finally getting some time to put all this stuff together and be able to play a little more and share more recordings with you guys. So, uh, you guys, take care. There's the horns for you, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for coming to the channel. Take care.